In one of our recent Flight Insight quizzes, we looked at the ILS approach into Harrisburg International. A note on the approach says that the procedure is NA for arrivals on the Harrisburg Vortac, airway radials 102, clockwise to 157, and at the Harrisburg Vortac on Victor 12, eastbound. This is one of the least well-understood parts of an approach plate, and we'll look at one of the biggest misconceptions at the end of this video. First, let's get a lay of the land. Here are just some of the airways that lead into the Harrisburg VOR, which is an initial approach fix for the ILS. The first part of the note says that the procedure is NA for airways from radial 102, which is almost the same radial that T299 is on, then moving clockwise to radial 157. This means that in addition to T299, Victor 210, Victor 469, Victor 184, and T291 are all not authorized because they fall in that slice of area between those two radials. Why can't we use these? It has to do with obstacle protection. When you join an initial approach segment from an airway, you're not gonna fly to an intersection, the Harrisburg VOR in this case, stop on a dime, and then follow the next course exactly. You're either gonna overshoot or undershoot. Obstacle protection is provided, but often only if the course change is 120 degrees or less. Let's line up all the airways with the radial they're on on the left. To determine how big of a turn to make onto the feeder route, which is a course of 118 degrees, we need to find what course we fly inbound on these airways, which is the reciprocal of what's listed. Here those are. Now, to get the course change for each airway, we take the difference of these courses and the feeder route course 118. Here those are now. Almost all the airways require a turn of more than 120 degrees. Some require a turn of almost 180 degrees all the way around. The exception is the bottom airway, Victor 265. It only requires a course change of 113 degrees. This is less than the 120 degree maximum allowed by the procedure designers. The procedure is allowed for arrivals on Victor 265 then, and we can tell that from the note that disallowed airways are from 102 clockwise to 157. Victor 265 on the 185 radial is fine. Flying in on the Victor 184 airway, radial 145 is not good though. Here we are inbound on that airway using just VORs. When the flag flips, we make a right turn to track the 118 radial, the feeder route on the approach. As we do, we drift pretty far north of course. A little bit of drift is okay and is built into the procedure protections, but our course change of more than the max allowed 120 degrees means we'll be pretty far off and have to do a sharp re-intercept. The matter isn't helped at all when we're flying with GPS and can actually be made worse because of turn anticipation. Because of the large course change, the unit is going to have our turn start well in advance of the VOR, a mile or two, even at slow speeds. So we end up undershooting the station. Again, that's okay for little course changes, but here we fall well short of the VOR and may be out of obstacle protection. The note on this approach also says the procedure is NA for arrivals on Victor 12 eastbound. Now, Victor 12 is on the 281 radial, flying inbound eastbound to the Harrisburg Vortac will be on a course of 101. To join the feeder route course of 118 degrees, we only need to turn right 17 degrees. This is well within the 120 degree max. So why is it disallowed? The answer has to do with descent angles. On an initial approach segment, the optimum descent gradient is 250 feet per nautical mile with a max gradient of 500 feet per nautical mile. On Victor 12, the MEA is 5,400 feet. Even if we're flying at that minimum altitude, once we cross the Harrisburg VOR, we have just 3.5 miles to descend at 3,000 feet before reaching Cebu, the intermediate fix. Let's see what that looks like. On foreflight, on the bottom right, we're tracking our climb slash descent gradient. We're at 5,400 feet on Victor 12 eastbound. When we cross the VOR, we begin a descent to 3,000 feet. Let's look to the MFD to see on the selected altitude arc where we're gonna hit 3,000 feet. We need to adjust our descent rate, making it faster so that we reach 3,000 prior to Cebu. Once we achieve that and stabilize the descent, we have a look at foreflight for our descent gradient. It's well over the max allowed 500 foot per nautical mile. 
This procedure is NA for just this reason. It's too steep a descent. These numbers hold true no matter how fast our aircraft is and how much tail or headwind component we have. It's just trigonometry. Now, here's the most misunderstood part of notes like this one. Remember how we can't fly an airway between radials 103 and 157? What if we're not on an airway but flying direct to Harrisburg on a course of say 320, which would be the 140 radial? That radial is within the disallowed zone, but you can fly the procedure. Why? It's a little strange, but here you're on a radar vector, having been cleared direct to the VOR by ATC, and radar vectors require you to be above the minimum IFR altitude for the controller, so your obstacle protection comes from that, not from following an airway. Likewise, if you're flying inbound on one of these disallowed airways, and the controller turns you to intercept the localizer or to another initial approach fix, you're now able to do the approach because you're being radar vectored. This might make a little more sense if you look at the note as presented by the Jeppesen chart. Rather than just a blanket note that the procedure is NA, what Jeppesen does is attaches the note with that numeral 1 to the Harrisburg VOR symbol. The note only applies to arriving at that initial approach fix, not the whole approach if you're vectored elsewhere. Also, the use of the word airway is a giveaway. They're not saying all arrivals between those two radials is not authorized. They're saying arrivals on airways between those radials isn't allowed. Don't get discouraged from doing an approach if you see this note. There are lots of reasons why the FAA makes parts of a procedure NA, and there are lots of other ground schools out there, but flight and sight training is about true mastery and expertise. If you're interested in more than just passing the test, Come join us today at the link here and in the description.